Hello you dirty potters! How are you today? Today's video is a special one specifically for me because I found a chemical that I've been looking for for quite some time. We're gonna be making a glaze, and it's not just any glaze. I finally got access to a chemical for glazes that I've wanted for a really, really long time. Here's how it usually goes when you first start to make your own glazes. You first start to make like a basic, basic glaze. You don't know how to weigh your gravity, you don't know how much water goes in what, you don't know how to treat it, what brushes, what sieves, you don't know any of that stuff. You just kind of throw stuff together in water, shake it up real good, and hope for the best, right? Sooner or later, people start telling you about these little things that help. Mixing in certain ways, certain sieves, certain quality of chemical, measuring your water as though it's an ingredient, marking them down, keeping notes, taking pictures, all that stuff. So you end up just taking all these glaze recipes from all over the world, just trying whichever ones you see fit, just hoping for the best, right? Sooner or later, someone tells you about a website called a Glazy. Glazy is kind of like a library, but specifically for glazes. I myself have my own profile on Glazy. I test glazes. I put the pictures there. I put what I did to them, what cone, what temperature, the treatment, all that stuff. The reason I am so excited is because I finally found where I can get a very specific chemical for a glaze that I've wanted to try for about two years called Crocus Martis. Yes, that is its real name. Yes, I know it sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Generally speaking, there's three different types of red iron oxide that you're gonna see most commonly in the wild. There's RIO, red iron oxide, of course. There's Spanish red iron oxide, which people swear by, but I use them interchangeably because the difference isn't enough for me to care that much. And then there's Crocus Martis, which I've never been able to find, but I recently found an entire two pound bag of it. Mmm. This yes. Is Which means that I can finally try this recipe that I've wanted to try for a couple years. Friend of the channel, Jenny Weeb, go check her out on Instagram, I'll post her stuff down below, reminded me of this recipe, and now that I have the chemical, I can finally try it. I didn't even need to make this video, I just, I'm really excited and I want you to be part of the excitement. That's it, that's all it is. The credit to the person who made this glaze, I assume, is a person named Van Gilder, but I found this glaze on Lisa Common's glazy profile. Her links are going to be down below. Credit to her. I'm going to be comparing it to my Randy's Red, which you've seen on the channel before. I've given you the recipe. The video to it looks like this. It's somewhere in my playlist. Don't blame me if you can't find it. I organize my playlist. It's your fault if you don't click through them. So here's the plan. We're going to make this glaze with red iron oxide as it normally comes, because most people are going to have access to regular old red iron oxide. Then we're gonna make the glaze as it states with 11.5 Crocus Martis in it and put that here We're gonna have one glaze test aisle for this glaze here and a brown one as well Then we're gonna have one test aisle for the red iron oxide I'm not doing one with a redstone clay body for the regular red iron oxide because I kind of feel like I know how it's gonna turn out already Usually redstone clay such as this already has a bit of iron in it and it's just gonna enhance it by a little bit but if this glaze recipe comes out a little lighter on the porcelain clay body and it becomes a little bit darker red on this clay body, I want to know. Before we start mixing these together and adding the water and taking the notes and weighing the gravity and all that, there's one small note that I want to talk to you about. I notice that the red iron oxide is a bit more granulated. It's a bit more chunky if you see it in there. I don't know if that's naturally how it comes or if I've only known this my entire life and I've never noticed it. As for the Crocus Martis, it seems to be a lot more spread apart, a lot more fine and it also has a lighter hue in comparison to the red iron oxide. I don't know if that's normal, I just want to note that down real quick. If anyone else on this channel puts glazes together, can you confirm or deny that for me? Maybe I just got a difference in batch, but I'm getting like chunks of red iron oxide and that's always been normal for me. But this stuff, not chunky at all. Maybe it's just the producer, I don't know, but we're gonna mix these together. Yeah. <clears throat> 
15 minutes later. So I've put together and sieved both of these. This one is the one with red iron oxide in it. They are both at specific gravity 1.33. I will note that one of them is a little bit of a lighter red, while the other one is a bit of a darker red. I don't know if you can see that. I can see it and it's kind of dark right now, so there's a lot of lights around you. But this one I can very clearly tell is Crocus Martis, and this one I can very clearly tell is red iron oxide. Which is weird to me, because when I poured the chemical powder, the powder itself was lighter than the red iron oxide. The red iron oxide seemed like a deeper red at the time. But I've kept track of these pretty well, and I've been mixing them up every now and then, really getting those little specks in there. So now all we have to do is mix this up really well, and start our test tiles. So we're pretty much set here. Over here is the Crocus Martis and over here is the Red Iron Oxide. As I said before, I'm just going to do one test style for the Red Iron Oxide because I've experimented with it so much that I'm really sure this is going to come out close to brown. But I don't have any idea about the Crocus Martis. What I can say about this glaze is that it dries really fast unless you double or triple layer it. Once you triple layer it, it takes a long time to dry like every other thing else. But this over here is still super wet for some strange reason. They're both at 1.33 specific grams. Gravity. I had to weigh them out and had to make sure so there was like an hour off camera where I was just messing with water and making sure everything was good I took notes down put a little piece of paper right here that way Crocus Martis is always on the left and the red art oxide is always on the right So we're gonna put these in the kiln now and I'll see you in about a week But it's honestly like a cute picture of a dog in maybe five seconds for you Okay Okay, listen hold wait listen to me Every time I do experiments like this, I tell you I'm not gonna go overboard with the testing, and then I go way overboard. Here's the apex, I'm over here. So what I did is I got three different clay bodies and put them inside of my tester kiln, which is right over there. My Hello. tester kiln, however, doesn't give really good results most of the time because the heat work is a little bit different. But what my tester kiln does really well is it gives me a small insight to the potential of what a glaze might be able to do. So these test tiles are from the tester kiln and they're unblended. I will explain what unblended means later. I'm telling you, I went overboard, okay? The first test was inside of the tester kiln, which usually has different heat work, and it is unblended. Straight mixed, sieved, nothing else. So that is the white test aisle. This over here is the brown test aisle. Not gonna lie to you, I don't like the brown test style, so I decided to test it on a third cup, a stoneware clay body that you're all familiar with, be mixed with grog on a white clay body, and it came out a little bit better. And I wish that you could see this here with me as well, because when I'm looking through the camera, like from my point of view, this kind of looks like a brown mustard, but in real life with my human eyeballs, it looks like kind of a yellowish reddish mustard, but this is the unblended tester kiln result. So these three technic- oh. So these three technically don't matter to me. These were just to see what potential they had. However, I did do another test aisle and I blended it 
What do you mean, Dante? What are you talking about blended? Well, most recently I've been reading a blog of a man named Old Forge, Joe Thompson. Some of you probably know him. He's a big name in the ceramic art world. I will link his links down below. But what he did is a little experiment where he got a couple glazes and he blended one in an actual blender and then didn't blend the other one. So I thought, I eh, might as well do this experiment on top of those experiments. So I made a couple tests where I blended them. And look, hear me out guy in the comments below who's a master chef and he's like, that's not a very good blender. I'm not, I'm not gonna spend $100 on a blender to put minerals and glazes and water and red iron oxide in it, all right? It's already kind of super dirty. I got a little cheapo $20 one. I can see you in the comments typing your yeah! already, so shut your mouth. So I've essentially given up brown clay altogether with this glaze. It seems to come out way more clear when you use it on a white clay body. And this is the blended tester kiln version of this glaze, Crocus Martis. And would you look at that, look how much of a difference simply blending the glaze in a crappy little blender did. It's fantastic. I just picked up a blender off of Instagram when they were like, oh, this is the greatest blender in the world. They're not, they can't blend crap, but you know what they do blend? Glaze minerals and they're 20 bucks and they work great for this one specific purpose. Don't use them for real blenders. Get a real blender for to make smoothies. Those things are butt. But keep in mind, this video is gonna become progressively better as we go up and up the scale. So this is blended out of the tester kiln, which usually does worse work than my actual kiln. Let's check out the real kiln that I did not blend. I just mixed and sieved these. These are regular test tiles at this point. So this is the glaze as I usually do it on a brown clay body, just sieved, not blended, nothing like that inside of my 1027 real kiln. And you can really see it getting progressively more and more red, as I would want with Van Gilder's Crocus Martis. I wanted a nice, deep, consistent red glaze. So this is it inside of my actual big kiln with a non-blended results. Now let's check out the white test aisle. This is actually a pretty good representation of the glaze in the way that I would usually test it. The problem is it takes like a month and a half to fill my giant kiln because it's the half the size of a human being. I could probably hide myself in it, but I don't have that much time to make an entire kiln load made out of testers. And even then, if I did, I would have to like learn from an entire kiln load with the tests and then test another whole thing. I would have no time for the YouTube channel or the store. I'd be constantly testing. So the tester kiln is actually a really good way to see the potential of a glaze before I waste a bunch of time making a bunch of test aisles for the real heat work of my big kiln. The next stage up was to see what would happen in my real kiln if I blended my stuff. Now this one's a little bit special because not only did I blend it, I also did a red iron oxide test. Like I told you in the beginning, I did a Crocus Martis test and I did a red iron oxide test with the same glaze base, but I blended both of these. I wanted to see what happened if I went full force on both of them. I got Crocus Martis, put it in the blender. I got red iron oxide, put it in the blender, put them in the same exact space in the kiln and I wanted to see how they would both come out. This test style is in the big kiln, completely blended on a porcelain clay body. This next one is the one that I got out of the red iron oxide test 
fully blended, fully glazed, layered on inside of the 1027 Big Scut Kiln. And I, and I could not be happier and more angry at the same time. I'm so angry that I went through all this testing for a new chemical, Crocus Martis, thinking that it would be better or more suited to make red glazes than red iron oxide. But look, the best textile out of the entire bunch, the only one that actually turned red, was this one with red iron oxide. Just to give you the scope of the amount of effort that was put into this one simple glaze test, the amount of blending, sieving, non-blending, white clay, brown clay, it's not like I can fill my entire kiln with these in the course of a week. I have to wait months for these tests, and the entire time, it's just fucking... <laughs> it is quite amazing though to see the difference in between the treatment of the glaze and the heat work in the glaze and what really happens to it. For example, this over here is the one that was in the tester kiln, non-blended, barely put together in the tester kiln, not very much heat work, and you can barely see any color. However, this was blended and just put in the regular 1027, and the difference in between the two is immaculate. Completely different, right? Just from putting this in a little old blender and having better heat work. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I will be putting all this information on my website blog at earthnationceramics.com. I'll probably release one result every week to a half a week, just so I don't throw all this information at you at once. I have a really bad habit of doing like two or three months worth of research and experiments and then just exploding it onto my blog only for nobody to read it past that one time because they're like, well, you put all the information in it the first time. Or I over exhaust people with the amount of information that I put on there. So I'll probably be releasing this information very slowly on my blog. If you want to revisit it, I will take fantastic pictures for you. Probably way better than the stupid glare on the... If you want this recipe, I will put it down below. It is not my recipe. It is a recipe called Van Gilder's Crocus Martis. I do not know who made the original glaze, but I will link it down below and credit the glazy profile that I found it on. Big shout out to Jenny. I will link her stuff down below as well. She probably has pictures on her Instagram as well. Tell me if you guys like these kind of experiments because I usually think they're a bit boring. But if you enjoy seeing the artistic process from the experimental side, let me know in the comments below and I'll do more videos like this. Again, thank you for joining me and I will see you dirty potters next week. Thank you for your patronage.